Hey, it's Dry Bear. It has been over a week since Dragon's Dogma 2 was available to the public and ready to play. And even after 47,000 reviews on Steam is still sitting at a mixed rating, which to be honest, wasn't too dissimilar to the first game in when it first landed on the shelves. But today I wanna to talk about one of the more hyped or discussed topics about Dragon's Dogma 2, and that is the lack of multiplayer co-op. Since the year is 2024, and we have so many different examples to look at and references to see, let's talk about why Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't have multiplayer. Player. Dragon's Dogma 2 director Hideaki Itsuno says that Capcom hasn't been considering any form of multiplayer for the game. And in his own words, we have not been considering any form of multiplayer for Dragon's Dogma 2. I think online games have their good sides just as offline games have their own. But the concept of the original game was to incorporate fun gameplay elements not found in conventional offline games while removing all of the hassles of online games. This is one of the basic original ideas of the first game that I don't plan on straying from. He even mentions that it would be fun to see my pawns being used by a famous streamer. The pawn system itself has been around for some time, but I think it can be used in more modern ways now too. And by and large, he's right. There are definitely a, a large separation between the offline games and the online games and what they bring to the fore. There are many online games that have succeeded simply by the fact that you can talk with other players, interact with other players, trade with other players, and share your experience with other players. And many of these games have lived and died by their player counts and who's on online to make the game livable or playable by you. Conversely, there are classic single player games that don't require anyone else or even an internet connection to play and have a good time with, and they are timeless. They can be played forever. I can pick up any number of single player games developed from the very earliest forms of video games until now today and still have a great time playing them. And while Dragon's Dogma attempts to bridge the gap by having online style mechanics and features built into the game while you are playing in a purely offline single player experience, it is certainly not the first game to do so. And I think one of the simplest and cleanest examples is going to be the message and the summoning system from any of FromSoft's Souls-like games, like the Dark Souls franchise or Elden Ring, in which not only can you see other players that have recently died in the exact position you are in, which makes you feel less alone in that area of the world. You can have a laugh as you watch a shade fall off a cliff to their death and the blood stain that was left behind. You can also read and place messages that other players can read and find throughout the world that can either be helpful, hurtful, or just plain funny. And even Dark Souls 1 had multiplayer, though it was in a limited fashion, in that you had to specifically put down a summon sign that your friend had to go locate in the exact same spot in that world while you were both connected online. You could summon them into your world, but that person only had one life, which means if they died, they would kicked out of your world, and any progress made would only be made in your world and not theirs, which means that if you wanted to do a co-op playthrough of Dark Souls 1, for example, you would have to do both sides of the same area in each person's world to progress through it together. Conversely, Dragon's Dogma 2 has a lot of these features as well, as the pawns themselves embody the representation of your friends, family members, or colleagues that might be playing the game at the same time as you. And there are actually people that made their pawns in a friend group and then had each other hire only their friends' pawns and leveled up around the same pace so that they could stay in each other's pawns party the whole way through. So even though it was a single player game, a group of four could fill their party with all of each other's pawns and play through the game together that way. Not to mention that the pawn quests themselves do provide a pseudo system of trading with other players. You can put up a pawn quest that has an item that you want to give to somebody or an item that you're looking to receive and you can have the, that item post up and someone can hire your pawn and complete the quest and complete that transaction as well. And when you use someone's pawn and then dismiss them, you can also send them off with an item or some gold that you want to send to that player. And when you log in or rest in an inn, you'll find that your pawn recaps all the different adventures that they did with someone else and all the items and gold that they received in response. Not only that, but the idle chatter that comes from the pawns is something that is token to Dragon's Dogma in general. It does kind of bring the lifeblood of the game together as you hear pawns talking about other arisens that they've interacted with, things that they found or haven't found, and when they do find something, they tell you about it, which means you are learning from someone else. And Itsuno himself has gone on record to say that this is what he was looking for out of the pawn system. He wanted it to be like playing with a 
good friend of yours who had already beaten the game sitting next to you on the couch or standing over your shoulder, giving you tips and talking to you and walking you through it. That sort of begs the question that I want to pose to all of you. Do you think that the multiplayer-like features in Dragon's Dogma are doing the trick for you? And when I really sat down and thought about it, I felt like there were a lot of missed opportunities for the pawn system as a faked or feigned multiplayer system in the game. Especially now that we're in 2024 and we have so many different options to choose from. Even just having a message system where you could put things down on the ground or in the game world that you can interact with other players indirectly with would make the constant exploration and traversal and walking that you have to do in Dragon's Dogma 2 a lot more unique and interesting with such a small add of a feature. Having the bones of a Gore Minotaur or a Griffin or a Cyclops appear and then having a message from a player or a Risen or another pawn that may have downed it at that position might make the world feel more alive. Coming upon a ladder that you have to sneak behind and drop down before you can get to it and a message or some kind of interaction with a player that talks about having the frustration of not being able to climb up on top of something. Walking in on the forested Griffin at Ness and finding trails or traces of other players that had been here before you might make that feel a little bit more homey. And I also feel like there were a lot of opportunities for the pawn system itself for more player to player interaction. It feels like they are quite robust in their ability to travel around the world, find their way through the world as well. It's no small feat to have them navigate from place to place and know from where you are, any place on the map to where you want to go. Even if you're on the volcanic island and you select a quest that's up in Vernworth, they will find a way to get from where you are to that part of the map, even though it's a different region entirely, that's pretty impressive and not something that every game does well as far as navigation goes. It's just as well to expect these pawns to get stuck everywhere, have no idea where to go, and not have any sense of direction at all. But it would have been awesome to give more options for the personality of the Arisen to be imprinted on the pawns themselves. Having pawns that are trolling and would grab you and throw you, or would steal items and refuse to give them, things like that that would represent their master, or some that might throw themselves in, in front of you to save you as someone might do that's in part of your friend group and even knowing that someone who owns that pawn and how they behave gets reflected by the pawn itself a lot more would be pretty interesting. And in some ways it feels like the restrictions the pawns have now create walls that probably could be torn down over time. See if you watch a content creator or a streamer or YouTuber who plays the game with a public pawn that's available, you'll see them log in or rest in an inn and find out that they got 50 items and 800,000 gold from all the people that use their public pawn in order to gain lots of benefit and they have that social interaction from people that are using their public pawn. But the average person is probably does not get very many interactions from other players using their pawn, especially as you, they start leveling up. I imagine there's plenty of people out there and comment down below if this is you where you can go entire day game days over and over resting with no response from your pawn that didn't get picked by and what didn't get picked up or didn't given get given any gifts. And on top of that, the level system is quite restrictive as well. I found that when I first started the game, uh, when it was first available at, at midnight on the first day, I was getting a bunch of people using my pawn, but because I was, you know, a content creator and this is my job, I out leveled almost everyone that was playing the game at the time. And by the time I was level 40, 50 on the first or on the second day, I was getting far less people finding my pawn and interacting with it because they would have to pay so many rift crystals just to bring their pawn into their world. So maybe a level scaling system that lets you use any pawn that you want or scale up the levels of a pawn that might be higher level without having to pay a bunch of rift crystals for it. Or maybe if you can use someone's pawn who's level 70 at level 12, you just choose not to level it up at all and that would give you the option to interact with that player directly. But you tell me, what is your perspective and what is your opinion on the multiplayer or pseudo multiplayer system in Dragon's Dogma 2? Has the pawn system satisfied you in ways that single player or single player-esque games like it have done in the past? And what would you like to see different in the future? If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.